Welcome back. Now time to start looking at the topic of discussion today in Good Morning Anambra. And for this segment, we'll have gentlemen that have joined us. They are Professor Collins Okafo. Professor Collins Okafo is Mahesh Odi Political Science, Namdi Azikiwe University, Oka. You're welcome, Prof. Thank you very much. And uh, I also have um, Sir Chris Chiupalu Jr. is a political scientist. Sir Chris, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Dave Opopasle is still very much around mm, here. Very much around. You're welcome. And this morning, we're going to look at political campaign season. And uh, you very much know that political campaigns in Nigeria have their unique Nigerianness, which adds excitement to the season. Shadow campaigns and proxy wars on the political turf have been going on around us for the past one year at least, and many times not so subtle. Now, it is official and legit. The doors into campaigns for presidential and national assembly elections in 2019 have officially been thrown open by INEC. Professor Okafor, 2015 campaign was anchored on change as Nigerians desperately needed one positive change anyway. Now, what do you think will form basis of this 2018-2019 campaign? Professor Th Collins. Okay. Thank you very much. I think that um, it depends from the perspective one is coming from. For the PDP, I think PDP is trying to change, to anchor its campaign on changing the change while the APC is trying to sell to, or to tell the world that uh, they started the change but that they are still changing the change whatever you see so what I'm trying to say is that um, it is supposed to be a campaign or campaigns that are based on presentation of fact presentation of fact in the sense that the ruling party should do well to explain to Nigerians what they have done and what they will still do. And then the opposition party will also try as much as possible to provide a kind of alternative to the ruling party. So you see that it's going to be a very uh, well, I say colorful, colorful in parentheses, colorful campaigns, okay. an interesting one, but Nigerians are expecting the best out of it. Okay. Uh, Sir Chris, Sir Chris Chippel, you have the PDP stock. Yes. Maybe you come from that angle. Are you changing the change, or do you have any other agenda for Nigeria? Well, you know, just like you said, you call this campaign period. Uh, virtually, my party, my great party, People's Democratic Party, uh, we believe in presenting an issue. Uh, if you look at uh, the campaign manifesto, which our presidential candidate, Elijah Atikwa Baka GCON, unveiled yesterday, he made a lot of inroads into what he wants to do, which is strengthening the country, fostering unity, I'm let, making Nigeria to work again. And this has been his campaign slogan. And um, virtually, uh, from the other side, you cannot be talking about next level. Where are you moving to? They, so are, coming mean, from, they are coming from somewhere. You mean, you, mean, you, mean, <laughs> you are now trying to move from the poor status of the Nigerians to now the poorer uh, status. So, it, it, sorry, but next level can also mean from the present status to a better status. Mm. You no, know, it can be because let me tell you, but it's just like an econo econ well, economics. We are looking at a mm. political campaign season. Mm. What do we expect? Well, promises, what you have to do, 
like just like I just said now, unveiling a campaign manifesto, working towards that. Because uh, initially, when we just entered this uh, present dispensation of this democracy, people were not interested in political activity. But now, people are getting interested day by day. The 1999 elections, 2003 elections, 2007 elections, we are not like that of what we have today. Today, people present issues, but what we'll now be talking about is that when you present an issue, are you working towards that campaign issue that you present to the public? Look at in 2015, APC presented change. But today, look at Nigeria. Now, you, 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 you talked about presenting an issue and working towards that. How do you work towards it in this campaign period? Because we are not yet measuring the performance or the results they will deliver. We are not measuring the deliverables yet. We are looking at what they are promising and how this 90 days of campaign will go. How do we know that a political party, like the two major political parties have uh, done a uh, plan on Berlin, uh, how do we know in the course of these 90 days that they are keeping with the words of their promises? Okay, Professor Kafo. No, the issue is that uh, for you to understand what we expected this period, I think we have to understand what campaigns are, mm. you know, in every political dispensation. You know, campaign period is a time when political parties go all out to converse for political support. It is a time political parties market themselves in the political market. It is a time the political parties go all out to enlighten the people on what they intend to do. So, and it goes with um, great skills. It is not enough to have a wonderful manifesto. It all depends on the way you present it to the public. So in campaigns, it is expected that the political parties and the candidates should apply a number of things in the act of delivering those manifestos. Skill is required. Skill in the sense that you must have a way of either talking to the people the way they will understand, having your message well spelled out the way the, 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 the electorate will understand, you know, and also having your ideas prepared from one stage to the other the way your listeners will also understand. And it goes with uh, colors, what we call colors. That is to say that you have to be very uh, special in the presentation process. There are some bad candidates that usually shine during the period of campaigns. It is just like marketing a product. So there are bad products that could be well marketed. And people will buy them. Or new products in the market. Or new products in the market. Mm. So that is what this period does. So it is a, a period of great expectations. It is a period people have been waiting for. Let us listen to all these candidates to know what they have. So I am expecting a very interesting period, a very interesting outing by the candidates. That is why I say that all the candidates should be given time to talk to Nigerians. It is no longer a, a, a taciturn type of leadership where we, the president can no longer face the press, where the president can no longer address world media, where the president is always reading from prepared speeches. If you are president, you should show capacity to address issues at any point in time. Or oh, else that kind of president is no longer in charge. If you are not briefed, you cannot talk, you can't speak. So this is the period. The yeah, that is why I also emphasize that this issue of deba debates should also be there. People are expecting them to face them. And when, do, when they fail to attend debates, what do you expect from Nigerians? Nigerians should react. 
they should react. Yes, in such okay. a way that uh, they, they, they will declare whoever declines to face them in public days as incapable. I see. Yes. I know that this political party that Nigerians are going uh, through all this while, and uh, the INEC have been trying to see, uh, to address that. But this time around, there seems to be this enthusiasm and uh, anticipation from Nigerians. I don't know. Is it because um, the, the presidential candidates have something to come to market with? Or what do you think that is, um, you know, bringing this new enthusiasm on Nigeria is to come out of us? Well, actually, uh, you made mention of uh, political apathy. Mm. You know, I said it earlier that uh, people are getting, Nigerians are getting interested in what is going on and what is happening. Uh, one thing draws the other, you know, is a chain reaction. Uh, basically, uh, these days, people are interested. INEC is also doing their own part. Uh, National Orientation Agency is doing, also doing their own part. Political parties are also doing their own part. And that's why you see today, people are moving up and down, trying to make sure that they get their permanent voters card, you know, how to participate. Then the, 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 the pressure groups, the NGOs, and some other political are, are moving around conscientizing their people, uh, uh, getting people knowing what is going on in different political parties, that before a political party will approach you for vote, you ask them, what do they have to offer? And it's on that ground that people are now questioning that the president has to need to do this or do that. Because just like my colleague said, uh, you can't just tell me that you want to lead me. And I can't see you. I can't see you. You can't fix an interaction. You need to interact with people. Tell them what you want to offer. Tell them what you want to do. It's true that the presidency is a very big something. But at least, uh, not only sitting down, uh, reading a prepared address, as he said, you need to interact with people. Even if you want to contest, even if you don't want to go on a enlarged campaign, you call a world media conference where you ask questions from the press. At least press are representative of the people, one way or the other, because I will call them for the of the ring. You speak with them. Tell them about what you want to do. Then on the other hand, if you come to other candidates running the election, like maybe let us drill down to Anambra here, people have to go to constituencies, talk to people, market themselves, let their campaigns be what they will meet up during the time they might enter offices. Because the problem we have usually have in all these election campaigns, people want somebody who is campaigning to go for a legislative house will come and tell people that I will build road. Mm -hmm. I'll build bridges, I'll do that. So, um, Without even thinking that he's going to a legislative house. Okay, um, we'll okay. also come at that, to that because that's an important aspect of this campaign period. Uh, but still on um, general issues now about the country, um, we've seen religion, this harmony, we've seen sectional uh, um, defenses or alienations being one of the issues that come up in campaigns. Are you seeing such uh, playing a major role in this campaign uh, period also? Before you answer that, Prof, please, let's see if somebody has joined us. Okay. So the lines are now open for those of you that are watching mm. from home, the political campaign season. You're free to make use of any of the uh, lines and then uh, call in and make your contributions, please. Go All on. right, go on. So actually, you made mention of uh, religion, uh, tribal, and, and all those. Would you uh, think that will play a major role in this campaign as well? <laughs> well, I don't think it will play a major role because, uh, let me say, when you look at the two main opposition parties running for this election, there are other much more parties. But when you look at the two main opposition parties running for this election, two of them, two of the candidates are from one section of the country, let's say Muslim. Mm. So it's not the time like in 2015 election let's see if has where the campaign. Excuse me, let's see if somebody Hello. has joined us. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, uh, but I have to just step on the line. I'm mm. reaching to you from Bumbo this morning. Okay, no. welcome. I can see. Very yes. sad. Yes, um, I think um, the discussion uh, of the actually led us to Understand that in one way or the other, Mr. President is not really covering Nigerian shallow. Because when you talk of them, reading of it meant speeches. You don't expect Nigerians to be happy with that. If Mr. President will have to do more in interacting with Nigerians, and if you talk of moving to the next level, 
will take the fall how to analyze the, 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 the full entire present day. What are the promises the APC government came up with before 2015? That is too late, too, too, uh, the default of the 2014 campaign period. These are the things Nigerians will look at. You promised Nigerians that the, the, the price reform will go down. And I don't know again, Mr. I'm telling all that one naira will equate to one dollar. How possible would it be? So Nigerians, they have to learn the very thing because we have tested the government of PDP and that of APC. So it's not going to be like what we have in 2015. This time around is going to be very serious. All right, Barrister. We are actually prepared to do administrations. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barrister. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Somebody is there. Okay. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, lady and gentlemen in the studio. Good morning. morning. Welcome. I am John Paul, engineer, calling from Oka this morning. Go on, engineer John Paul. Yes, I want to contribute this way in three ways for One, the political campaign season is here again. The PDP and all other parties, APC, the government in part, they have a lot to do. One, on the side of IMEC, that is the board in charge of the electoral process in this country, I want them to sit up. Sitting up in the way that uh, all the electoral acts should be looked into and make sure that it is observed by the political class. I mean the politicians and the party involved. Two, on the side of the judiciary, the LPDA, the legal instrument in this country, I think it's quite porous and uh, they're not up to, they're not doing what they are supposed to be doing. Right. Whoever that violates the election act and the campaign process should be brought to book. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you, General Paul. Thank you, John Paul. Please. John Paul, please, <laughs> let's take others. Let others please. be able to thank contribute. You. Thank you very much for having your opinion. Mm. Okay. Yes, I know that um, it is true that campaigns stomping and uh, come many times with promises and are never, that are never redeemed after the elections. And we want to find out why is it that our politicians tell us lies? Why do they tell us lies? Why do you promise what you cannot uh, redeem? I'm coming to you, Prof. Well, the issue is that... Um we look at politics as a game, a game of interest, okay? That thing you call lies may not be regarded as one to the politician. Because uh, he, he, he sees himself as the best product at that material time, and that whatever he says is the truth. Mm. But the fact remains that at times along the line, issues may begin to come up that will make it impossible for him to fulfill that promise. And then to us, it becomes a lie. But to him, it becomes a promise unfulfilled. There are How two many? different things. How many What's them? the difference between a lie and a promise unfulfilled? When you tell a lie, you are liable. And when you promise and fail, you are not liable. Um, it depends on the situation. Mm. For instance, if I tell you now that, let me use the words our politicians use, that I will water everywhere. And fire everywhere. And fire everywhere. Is that supposed to be a lie? It is a lie. Promise? Okay, still on that. Um, because he knows that it is not mm. possible. If it's a lie, it means they tell us lies, because this is what they come yeah. up with every four years. Yeah, but uh, you see, at the national level, we are looking at... We are not... Uh, you say that... Look at, look, at, look at the crowd now, Prof. Look at the crowd... Are these rented crowds or do, do they have voters' cards? No, no, no. What you have to understand is that mm. campaign periods are the most colorful periods mm. in, the elector, in the election process, the electoral process. That is the time the people expect to see a lot of things. That is the time the politicians are in their best. In terms of the way you appear, in terms of the way you talk, 
in terms of the way you express yourself and whenever there is a political rally the people want to go there to see things differently to see a new thing okay or new things. um still on that um the urge or the need to see new things is something that is uh that we see during political periods like this. I want to ask uh, Sachi Puello, how would an ordinary person be able to distinguish between promises that are fulfillable and the ones that cannot be fulfilled? Um, how do we uh, have that kind of literacy level for people to assess promises coming from politicians at this time? Well, uh, it's all about political awareness. And uh, basically, let me tell you, like Prof said, mm. Uh, you know, he asked the question, what is the difference between lies and promise and fulfillment? <laughs> yeah. Basically, when you come into a place, let's say government, hmm, there's what we call bureaucracy, red tapes, and all those things. Somebody might, eh, as a legislator, for instance, you go into the parliament, push a bill that will concern development in your constituency. Because of the budget, they might, it might be included in the budget for that year, but you know, the implementation level most often, it's not always that very fast. It may be that by the time might have that uh, budget or that, uh, that particular project might be carried out, they might have sat and come out from the parliament. And mm. people will now be looking at it that you made a promise, you didn't fulfill it. Well, this is and they will now give the credit to the incoming person without even knowing that we are the person who pushed to initiate that, who initiated that project. I don't know what I'm saying. Mm. Yes, to say. we but in we're all saying. honesty, what we always tell people as if you are going for campaign look at the indices look at the issues that if you tell people or things that when you tell people you can be able to fulfill at least 90 or 95 percent of it so that it will not be see it will not be uh, people will not take it that you made a promise it you did not fulfill it and secondly on the other part there are some things people know that it cannot be accomplished for instance, the incoming administration came in with a lot of things. So in one of the interviews, I recall they told her they would sell fuel for five naira, something like that. You know, looking at the econo economical level in this country, things at that time, or... at that time, there's no way, you know, you can sell fuel for five naira between 110 naira that time to 45 that naira. That is why you should Without not putting say, some not things, put on some effects. Why, yes, why you should not tell us lies? Because we need to trust our leaders. Of course. Okay? Of course. And once I discover that you've told me lies, I don't trust you yeah, again. You see, it is because of the, the nature enough, of, of our enough, environment. Of, I want us okay. to advise the electorate on which way to go. Though I know they have already have their scorecards in their hands, waiting for those people that are coming in, and then the ones that are already here, to give them their scorecards based on what they have achieved. Now, do you think that this scorecards will work? In the concern, the fact they have created an artificial hunger and people are gullible, okay? They give you money, you give them votes. Please advise our people as we go. No, the, the, what I have is that um, people should be wise enough this period to know what is good for them, you know, to decide who leads them, you know. It is not everything that the politicians say that they should uh, take. So they should have a designing, you know, sense or senses in order to know what is right for them. So that is my advice. Okay. Sachi Huelo, is money going to play another big role in this 2019 election? Looking at what we have seen during the, the uh, what some of the governorship primaries elections as well. that we have seen, some of the governorship elections mm. like Ikiti and so on, then the primaries, states. is money going to be the deciding factor in this coming election? Well, uh, uh, you know, just they're calling vote by it? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I don't think to play a role. These days, Nigerians are becoming wiser. And uh, if you follow, like our party is not keen into line with what most of the NGOs are doing, uh, educating Nigerians, don't sell your votes, vote according to your conscience. We know that just a remaining 87 days to the election will be a day of crisscrossing constituencies. Making sure that all the wars are reached, all the pulling, I mean, all the local governments in the country are reached. Uh, but in all, we've been telling people and we keep on saying it, that vote for a good candidate so that we can make Nigeria to work again. 
and that is why they should give us a very clean manifestos and manifestos manifestos that they can run with so that we won't feel that this is another lie that is coming up and you then nigerians should also develop the attitude of um uh, interrogating their leaders based on what they said as, as it's done in the Western world, advanced democracies. I see. Mm -hmm. If you look All at right. what is happening in the U.S. now, you see that the people are following the president, the current president mm -hmm. of America, based on what he said. And I love this midterm election. Yes. I think we we'll have to involve it here. What do you <laughs> say, Dave? I, I think it's a proper one, but the question will now be how do you interrogate them? Some of them, you invite them to town hall meetings and they send they their come. PAs. They don't I don't know how we do that. <laughs> they don't, it will be, it, it, be an issue for another day. We'll I tell you. The, the I town tell hall you. meeting, the town hall meeting in this country uh, need to be changed mm. you know people people see this town uh, town hall meeting because we call it town hall meeting mm. town hall meeting is meant for where you can interact with your constituents exactly. if you're a legislator yeah. or with your, uh, with your subject if you're a governor or president but these days people have turned town hall meeting into sharing of sewing machine I'd like to thank you very much for coming. Professor Collins Okafor, you are the former HOD of the political science, Namde Azikiwe University. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for the opportunity. Professor, though you have run past me. <laughs> I met you in school. You gave me just two years. You are a professor and I am still... Professor in your own chair. Okay, thank you very much. Chris Chiupolo Jr., a political scientist. Thank you very much for coming today. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. and I've been around with Dave mm. in a very short while. We'll welcome you into another segment. Thank you very much.